Welcome back to our video series about what makes a truck truly bulletproof. In our earlier two segments, we talked about oil coolers and EGR coolers. In this segment, we'll take a look at the 6 liter cylinder heads and the bolts that secure them to the engine block. Because we'll be removing the heads, this is a pretty involved teardown. Before you tackle this yourself, make sure you're up to the task of reassembling all of the components correctly. Stock head bolts for the 6 liter are designed to stretch as they are torqued properly, which is intended to increase the fatigue life of the bolts. However, it became common for the elongated bolts to stretch out too much, which can compromise the head gasket seal. After that, it doesn't take too long for the cylinder heads themselves to become damaged. Cylinder head studs such as these from ARP are threaded at both ends and are capable of more clamping force than bolts. They're also longer than the stock head bolts which gives them more thread grip. These studs are inherently better than head bolts at keeping the head gasket seal intact. And these are the studs. Pair that to a head bolt. Alright, now we're going to throw on the Ford factory head gaskets. Um, you'll notice they'll go on either way. We get this a lot. You're not going to know it's on backwards until you've got the head on already torqued and start to go, or got the head on and trying to put the push rods in. It'll be backwards. The only thing that really shows what direction it goes are these two holes. The, the two holes will always go on the bottom left. Just like that. I'll usually put these top ones in and start them just to make sure the head doesn't get bumped off. All right, the head studs instructions are to install them hand tight. And it does matter. If you run them in tight and leave them tight, you're going to have a real problem when you go to torque the nuts down. They'll pop and grab and mess your torque setting up. So the way I normally do it is Get them all started. It's a 3 16th standard Allen. Run them in until they bottom out. While you're doing that, you try to make sure that they're all pretty much going down the same amount where they're all pretty uniform. Then just take and crack them loose. A quarter turn or so. Seems a little redundant, but it does matter. And then just tighten them by hand. That last little bit. A lot of times these push rods will have a, a copper colored end on them. If they do, the copper end goes up. These particular ones don't, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can get these crooked, so just make sure they're sitting in the lifter. And they should all look very uniform when you're done. Bridges are next. They have an oblong side. The oblong side there. I always put it up. Uh, next to the rocker carrier. A lot of people take the rocker carriers completely apart. Like each, each uh, rocker. You can remove it as a whole assembly though. And it's much easier if you do. It's a good idea is to inspect the tips. They have been known to come off. There's a little pivot on the ends. And there's also a little ball that sits on the pivot in here. Those can also come out. Just make sure they're there. It's, it's really bad when they're not. It'll take the head right out. Just line everything up. And now sit just like that. All right, next you gotta lube the studs. You can't get too much. All right, we're putting the washers on. Um, they tend to stick from out of the bag and you can put, you can double them up without realizing it. Then you get to the end of the job and you're minus a washer and panicking. So just make sure you only have one in your hand. And the nuts now, like I said, you can't use too much lube. And you'll know if you don't have enough, it'll start binding. And if it starts binding, then you gotta just back your torque up and restart over. 
there's another potential problem related to the 6 liter cylinder heads. Cracks can develop between the heads injector bore and the coolant passage next to it. This can lead to fuel mixing with the coolant inside the engine. Bulletproof Diesel provides two different solutions for cylinder heads cracked in this way. The Bulletproof Cylinder Head Repair Tool is available via mail order and can be used with the cylinder heads still in place on the engine. It's inserted directly into the injector bore and seals the cracks for a reliable repair. The second solution we offer is only available at the Bulletproof Diesel facility. We sleeve the injector bores in a process that allows for the stock fuel injectors to be retained. These sleeves offer the ultimate protection against cracks in the injector bore. I run them down with electric just to get the slack out of everything. At this point, it just, it's kind of important to get the top down because that's where the dowels are. So you want to make sure the dowels are starting. And then I'm just taking the slack out with this. If you spin it too fast, it'll throw the lube out. So don't get them going too quick. All right, that's just to get it down flush. And then the work begins. Three steps to torque them. Usually start at 75 pounds. Okay, if it pops, it, it's not giving you a correct torque value. And I found that if you just take it and back it off, just that much, and just torque it right back down to where you were when you were torquing them. I'm at the 150 right now. Everything's fine. Last round is 210. All right, let's finish putting the rest of the bolts in the head. We'll torque the ones across the top, factory spec. From past experience, it's a good idea to cover up any existing holes because anything can fall in there and you're not going to know it until you go to start the motor and it'll ruin your week. Bulletproof Diesel uses and recommends OE fuel injectors. When the pattern failures in the 6 liter have been corrected, these injectors are reliable and long lasting. Watch your side. Down. Beautiful. Putting the injectors in, I've uh, put a healthy dose of Sil Glide on each O-ring just to make sure they slide in there and don't bind. The injector is keyed, so it's, it only goes in one spot. Next, we put the injector connectors up into the rocker carrier hole where they belong. Just kind of get them started. They have a lock, so they're a little bit stiff to get in. Let's do that. Uh, there's a notch in the end of the connector. The notch goes to the bottom every time. I'll usually pour oil in the top of the injectors, just so you're not going in dry with a wave rail. Helps keep the O-rings from getting damaged and the injector from firing dry. This is called the wave rail. You see each injector nipple. Um, right now I'm installing the uh, hold down bolts for the wave rail. It's a T30 head and just make sure they're snug. This is a standpipe. This is what actually connects the branch tube to the wave rail. It's so the oil comes up from the branch tube, from the high pressure pump through the branch tube up to the standpipe and then out through the wave rail. Just trying to wipe all the lube off the gasket surface of the, hit of the rocker carrier. Up next, we're gonna put the valve cover and gasket on. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, it's the final step. We're getting the valve cover on this side. Hopefully you paid attention on the tear down to where these studded bolts go. This side's the same on just about every truck there is. You got for the glow plug hold down, these are all have to be studded. The glow plug module. Just do that and then I always double check them by hand just to make sure. Installing the glow plugs. I use an old spark plug boot starter to get them in, it works pretty good. With the ARP stud securing the cylinder heads in place and sleeves in the injector bores, the potential for head failure has been greatly reduced. Both the gasket seals and injector bores are protected against the problems that seem to plague stock 6 liter engines. As the engine was reassembled, we installed other bulletproof diesel parts in order to correct the other identified pattern failures in the engine. You can learn more about those in other segments of this video series.